Hi everybody, welcome back to Darlingborough Model Railway. I'm Richard. In the video last week, I looked at a couple of common painting techniques that can be used to paint effective rock faces on your models. This week, I'm going to be looking at how we can complete the models by creating effective terrain using a variety of different products. So prior to this video, off camera, I quickly made a few scenic tiles, similar to how I've done this before. These were just going to be created as test pieces to try a variety of different finishes that can be applied to a piece of terrain. While the plaster was still wet, I went for each terrain and applied different elements to it to make it look unique. I used a variety of different products, including bark pieces, sand and stone grit mixture, and random offcuts which I can use to represent debris. On one of the tiles I have created a crater texture by simply shaping a crater shape out of the plaster with my finger and on the last piece I've left this plain so I can apply basic grass. So while it was a really nice hot sunny day I took the opportunity to um, paint the base colours on the models. I used a matte black spray paint to cover the bases that have the rocks on them. So that's the two that have the bark pieces and the one that I've covered in all of the sand and granite mixture. Unfortunately, I actually ran out of matte black spray paint as I was trying to paint the model with the debris on it. Uh, the only other can I had was satin finish, which if you remember what I said before, wasn't going to be ideal. If you are using, for example, a satin finish or a glossy finish, it will not give you the effect that you're after. It will not give you the effect that you're after. The satin and the gloss will be too shiny. Too shiny. However, I did think that as I was painting metal objects or potentially metal objects, the satin wouldn't actually be too much of an issue because everything was going to be kind of a metallic finish anyway so I used that instead and then for the last two models where I was going to put like natural um, covering on I used a mixture of brown ochre, brown sienna and black and I just created a bit of wash and covered them in brown paint nothing special, same as before as I was painting the brown mud onto the models I noticed that the ones I previously sprayed black with the black spray paint had almost dried so I thought why as well continue and paint the rest of the models as at the same time on the model with the debris I actually used a really really small paintbrush because I wanted to try and get all of the detail um, keep all that detail so I didn't cover it in mud um, I painted all around the areas where there's like the debris and kind of paint painted in between as well um, I did miss a little bit but I thought well you know it's gonna be kind of like a muddy uh, texture anyway so it's not going to be too bad um, so yeah just take a little bit more time on that one uh, once I'd finished all the models basically I just put them up to dry it's uh, about 300 degrees so I'll put them on top of the shed and uh, let them dry out what I've done is I've created six pieces now I'm not going to explain the methods or techniques that I've used to create these pieces um, basically I wasn't actually filming working on them because it was just my time just to have a bit of a play a bit of an experiment really see what I could come up with see what different finishes um, look like see what works and see what doesn't work out of the test pieces I tried using uh, different flocks I tried using static grasses I've tried using uh, Mod Podge for the first time to create a wet, uh, muddy look. Uh, and then I've had a bit of a play with some uh, resin, just for the fun of it, basically. For the first one, I used a mixture of uh, various flocks, um, such as uh, popular brands like Woodland Scenics, for example. Um, I've used some Jarvis stuff in there as well. Um, I find that the flocks work really, really well. Um, they do tend to mix together really, really nicely. Um, they're really nice to work with. It sticks really well. And you do get quite a natural looking finish on the model. I like the greens. I like the fact that it's very natural looking as well. Um, I think that um, for the models, I was looking to produce quite a natural looking hill anyway. Um, so that's a really, really good contender. 
For the arid sort of dry look, again I use some of the uh, scenic materials, the flocks and the scatter materials as well. I did do a quick dry brush with the uh, granite texture, the sand texture, um, just to kind of make it look a bit more dry and arid and more like a desert. Again, I think it does look quite effective. It does look really, really good, especially with the, the sort of dark earth and the mixture of all the sort of browns. However, for the models I'm producing, I don't think that that is the sort of finish colour that I'm really looking for. I'm looking for something that's quite vibrant, that looks quite alive, really, quite natural. I think that these colours in this mixture would work really well in a, an autumn or a winter scene, in a forest, perhaps. Um, but for this particular model, I'm not going to use this finish. I also had a go at using some of my own homemade materials, such as these ones here, um, which I've created out of sawdust. The problem is I don't think that they work very well. The sawdust I used was a bit too coarse. Even though I did sand it and I sifted it quite well, I still feel that it's far too coarse to actually um, produce a, a sort of realistic looking um, scatter material, certainly by its own. I think that if you used it um, sparingly with dark muted colours it would work well for a forest floor um, or something along those lines but as it stands it looks quite garish in my eyes and I just don't like the sort of finish of it so again I'm not going to be considering that for my final pieces. I also had to go at static grass as well. Um, I'll be honest it's not working for me. Um, I don't know whether it's just a fact that I've not really got much experience or it's whether the fact that I'm actually using my own homemade static grass applicator. But the grasses I used, they just didn't really work very well. Um, it just looks like I've kind of got a bit of grass, just plonked it on. I could maybe refine this, however, for these models, I just don't feel that static grass would be the sort of finish that I'm after. I then decided to have some fun with my models because why not? They're only test pieces. I'm not going to be using them for anything particularly. With the piece featuring the crater, I decided that I wanted it to look really wet and muddy and just generally really gooey and goopy. Um, so what I did was I applied some gloss Mod Podge over the top of it. Now, I probably didn't mix it very well and I probably used it far too thick because I noticed that even after a few days later, it was still quite white and wet and it wasn't really drying properly. Now maybe in a few days or so it will kind of completely clear and settle and it will look a lot better than it does but at the moment I'm really not happy with the uh, the finish. As the model was drying I thought well you know if it's not going to dry properly I may as well play around with some extra effects. So I got out some resin that I bought from the pound shop. Um, basically just made it together, mixed it up with some fluorescent green paint and basically created a, a sort of toxic goo or a um, toxic waste, radioactive goo, however. And I put that in the crater, um, splashed it on the model, and I just basically let it dry. I do quite like the effect, um, I'll be honest with you. Um, I do think it works really well, but not for this diorama or these diorama pieces. Um, I think it would look great on maybe a battle board or, um, you know, you could use it in... Uh, a dungeon for example or something along those lines if you are using it for wargaming terrain um, for this kind of scenic diorama not really what I was looking for but you know it was good fun it looks pretty fun and funky so uh, yeah why not I also decided to create um, a sort of fun piece as well um, which was essentially a sort of post-apocalyptic um, debris filled battlegrounds waste ground piece I thought it would be a fun just to create a bit of a complete mess um, and uh, just see how that goes. I had the idea of uh, incorporating pieces of junk and random debris so I incorporated that into the model while I was creating it and then when I came to paint it I wanted to paint it with a, a sort of dry brush just to sort of illustrate sort of metal pieces. I didn't do a very good job but what I did was applied my own kind of mixtured base material which is just essentially a mixture of any bits and bobs and stuff that I've been using. I've just put it all in a tub, mixed it all together, and when I apply the PVA glue, I just literally chuck it on. Really, really quick, really, really simple. And I think it looks really effective because it's just a complete mess. 
which is the effect I'm looking for. I want to thank Luke Fellows uh, from Geek Gaming for actually uh, giving me the idea really. Um, it is a product that is available. Again, I'm not affiliated with them at all, but I just want to make you aware of it. Um, or you can create your own. I've just been making my own, just as it's been going along. Um, and I would really recommend either trying it, using your own materials, or buy a bag, give that a go, and see how you get on. For the dioramas, again, it is not what I'm looking for. It's not the finish I'm looking for. But um, if you are doing any kind of like war game or tabletop gaming, um, anything like that, it's a really, really quick way of creating a good, fun texture um, for terrain pieces. So the reason I've created these test pieces before um, finishing off the actual final dioramas is because I wanted to make sure that um, I get the final dioramas to look exactly as I want them. I wanted to play around with a few different techniques, different ideas, and just basically kind of get in my head how I was going to complete these models before completing the models. If you just fire straight into working on scenery on your layout or building a terrain piece or diorama um, and you're not quite sure of what you're doing or how you're doing it to be fair you could potentially completely mess it up it's always better to have a bit of a play have a bit of a test with different techniques before you actually commit to your final piece now i know that for the dioramas what i want to do is i want to use the flock materials I feel that they work the best. It does come out to a nice sort of grassy field. I feel that I have got a good mixture that will work really, really well. And I feel that I can work with the extra bits, the clump foliage, and get a really nice effective looking piece of terrain with that. To cover the hills on these dioramas, I'm going to be using a mixture of blended turfs. First of all, I covered a model where I want the grass to appear in a PVA glue. I then started to sprinkle the base colour, which in this case was a green blend, onto the models. I also scattered on some earth blend as well, just to give it more variety and colour. Most of these are from Woodland Scenics, Jarvis and some other mixes in as well. I generally find that they do all blend so that it looks very natural. To add some contrast, I used a dark green scatter from Jarvis. I applied this on the bottom of the hills, on the sides and anywhere where it would naturally be slightly darker. I also applied this around the edges of where the rocks protruded from the hills. Once I was happy with the coverage overall, I sprayed the models in isopropanol and then applied a thin watered down PVA mixture. The isopropanol breaks the surface tension and prevents the PVA from beading together. The water and PVA mixture seals the model and prevents any excess flock from falling off afterwards. For this, I personally used a pipette, although you can use a spray bottle, which might be quicker. Once the base layers had dried, everything was completely solid. I then focused on where I wanted to include some specific details, such as bushes and little light tufts of grass. For the bushes, I used a dark green clump foliage. This is a material that you pull off in clumps and stick directly onto the model using PVA glue. I placed the bushes roughly where I wanted them, around the base of where the rocks met the grass, and also some at the bottom of the rock face. I added a few onto the top of the hills as well, just for a bit more visual interest. Once these had stuck down, I then sprinkled some light green coarse turf over the top of it. This essentially broke up the colour, giving the bushes highlights. Again, I also sprinkled some on top and stuck it down as before with some watered down PVA glue. Now, if you remember in last week's video, I mentioned I've got a large area where I missed the plaster and it's showing through to the polystyrene. 
This was very easily covered up using some lichen. Lichen is a mossy product which represents thick growing vines and weeds on areas where there may be running water. By simply filling the gap full of PVA glue and attaching the lichen, the gap vanishes. And for a final touch, I added some polyfiber to represent some light, thin vines and undergrowth growing over the rocks. One final spray with isopropanol. And a final cover of the model in watered down PVA glue to seal it. Now all I had to do was wait for them to dry. So there you go, two matching terrain models made from different materials, using different methods, painted using completely different techniques. Now if you look at them side by side, it's almost impossible to tell that they were made completely differently. They could be a matching set. Now, okay, fair enough, when I say matching, I am aware that the rocks on the rock faces are completely different colours. Now the reason for that is basically I chose a completely different colour palette when I was producing them for this video. The reason was because I wanted to differentiate between them and make it easy to identify which one was which. However, as you can see, by using the same colours, the rocks created with bark can match the plaster-based ones. So it just goes to show, it doesn't really matter how you build it, as you can achieve the same goals either way. Now, I would be interested to know if you guys have a preference to any of the techniques uh, or methods that I've shown you in this series. If you do, please by all means leave a comment in the comments down below. Um, I do tend to reply to all of the YouTube comments personally, um, so it would be good. Um, also, if I have inspired you during this uh, series as well, it would be interesting to know what you guys do. Please by all means send me any pictures of any models or any pieces of terrain that you make that have uh, sort of followed on after watching these videos. All of the contact details are up there. Um, and what I'll do is, um, with your permission, I will actually feature them on future videos on the channel as well. Also, if you have liked these videos, um, all the general content that I've put out, and you do want to support me, um, I won't ask for a subscription or anything like that. All I ask is, please just buy me a coffee. Um, if you do that, then basically anything that uh, I get towards the channel will go towards like scenery, it will go towards um, paint, it will go to just basically creating uh, models and sort of content for the channel as well. Um, and I do appreciate it. Thank you very much. So I know what you're thinking. Why am I talking about building terrain? on essentially a channel that's talking about a model railway. Well, when I'm talking about building terrain, you may think I'm talking about like tabletop gaming, um, but also um, I can be talking about scenery uh, with the model layouts because they do go hand in hand. If you are building a layout or a railway, then at some point you will want to build some kind of scenery on that layout. So basically the methods I've been showing you in the last uh, few videos, they can be adapted for that reason as well. This series has really, really helped me to focus on what I'm going to be doing next on Darlingborough Model Railway. I am going to get the track going. I've been saying it for months and I've not really progressed. That is number one priority. Once I've done that, I am planning on building something like a mountain. It's going to be rocky. It's going to have lots of greenery, grass, probably including some trees. Like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the videos. Um, also, um, if you are interested in the videos, by all means, share them with your friends. You know, send links out to anyone that you know who might be interested. Let me grow my channel. Um, I do appreciate all the people that have subscribed already. And in the meantime, um, what I'll do is I'm gonna let you watch some of these videos, uh, other videos that might be of interest. 
and hopefully see you again soon. Thanks for watching.